Okay, in this video, we're going to talk through um, edge finding, which is a method of uh, probing or locating something on the coast runner's bed. Um, and if you're following along with the universal clamp operation, the specific thing we're going to edge find here is the y axis on the squaring stop. But this video will also serve to talk through edge finding generally, which you'll do both in other steps in the universal clamp operation and also in other jobs generally. Um, so every time you're going to do edge finding, we'll give you a warning about it with this prepare for edge finding step. We'll talk you through the main steps of edge finding, which will also be covered in this video. Um, in any case, once you've read through this, once you've watched the video and you feel comfortable with it, you can click next. And the first thing we're going to do is move our edge finder over to near the squaring stop. And because we positioned that squaring stop earlier, the machine knows exactly where it is, even though it hasn't probed it yet. So you can see that we're now moving over. First, we're going to home. And now it's going to move over next to the squaring stop. And it's going to start rotating. And if you're curious, it's currently spinning at the um, minimum spindle speed that the, spe uh, the uh, coast runner can achieve, which is uh, 1500 RPM. Um, and you'll notice that our edge finder, of course, uh, you can see how the tip of the edge finder is not concentric right now. Um, that indicates that it hasn't found the edge yet. All right, so um, now it's time to actually do the edge finding itself. And the way we do this is by manually controlling the mill, which you may not have done yet. Um, what we're in right now is called the guided mode experience of CR Right. But if you click on the little joystick icon down here, it will open up what we call manual mode. And manual mode allows you direct control over the machine, which you can do various things with. But in this case, we're going to do what's called jogging, which is uh, manually moving uh, one or more axes uh, by a controlled amount. So you can see that I have various buttons over here. These are my jogging buttons. And you'll see that if I click the negative button in the left right axis, which is the Y axis, uh, note how the spindle moves just a little bit over to the left. Just like that, right? Uh, we just moved one millimeter to the left. Um, I know that because my jog mode is limited or per click mode, and it is one unit, which in this case is millimeters. Um, if you're curious, there is a continuous mode here as well, and continuous mode allows me to move as long as I hold the button down. So if I hold the button down here, you see how it moved uh, in a continuous fashion. Uh, you may find that useful in some circumstances uh, for edge finding or for touch off or things like that. But I do warn you to be careful with that because it's easy to accidentally crash um, if you're not careful. Anyways, let's switch back to limited. Uh, you'll recall, uh, recall that the set of instructions for edge finding uh, said that we first go in one millimeter increments. So I'm going to move in one millimeter little increments closer and closer to my squaring stop. Um, I'll pause here to note that those of you familiar with edge finding may have used edge finders in the past that are 100% visual. So you have to rely on looking at the edge finder and watching it to go from its current uh, out of centricity uh, state into a more concentric state. Uh, and we could certainly do that here, but this edge finder that I'm using, which is model A250, which should be the edge finder included in your kit, also has an audible cue once it's contacted the edge. And you'll see this when I move it over uh, a couple more times. So one millimeter closer, one millimeter closer, and there we go. You can hear that the edge finder is now clicking. You can also see that it's much more concentric. Um, but the main cue that I always use personally is that audio cue. So now I know that I'm touching the edge. But we just went by, you know, single millimeters, and that's huge. So let's back it off a little bit by clicking the positive Y jog, which moved over to the right. And now it stopped making that noise. Now we can switch to a smaller jogging step. So I'm going to switch to 0.1. I'm just typing that in with my keyboard. And now I'm going to do tiny little 0.1 steps over close to the edge. I'm not even sure if the video is picking that up, but it is moving towards that edge. Here's a good opportunity for me to note that in addition to using these buttons, these jogging buttons that you can click with your mouse, there are also hotkeys on your keyboard that you can use to jog. Um, and we do have a key bindings tab here that you can use to select those key bindings. They'll tell you what they are. You can also change them. Uh, on my Mac, I'm just using the standard defaults, which are the arrow keys for X and Y, 
and uh, plunge and retract with A and Z. And I'll maybe go over those a little bit more in my uh, video about touch off, but for now I'm going to switch to using my arrow keys to, um, to jog. So we're still jogging in 0.1 millimeters, so a little bit at a time, and there we go. Now we've touched the edge in 0.1. Once again, I'm going to back it off here, and I'm going to go down to 0.01. What's the method behind choosing the steps here? Like, how accurate do you have to be? Um, it really depends on how much precision you're looking to gain. Uh, the machine is capable of movement in a thousandth of an inch. Uh, we're currently in 0 .0, 0, uh, 0.01 millimeter, which, uh, do the math in your head, I think that's not too far off from a thousandth of an inch. And so we're, we're reaching the mechanical tolerances of the machine. Um, it's possible that you don't need that level of precision. Uh, for this universal clamp, given that this will be used for future uh, indexing and clamping operations, I do think I want it to be about as accurate as I can possibly get it. So I'm okay with going down to a thou. Anyways, now that we're at 0 0.01, once again, I'm going to use my hotkeys to gently jog over. So one... Almost there. I can hear it start to rub. There we go. All right, we've just found the edge in 0 0.01 millimeter. That's sufficient. I'm going to leave it where it is, so it's going to keep clicking. It's okay, it's not hurting the, uh, the edge finder for it to be clicking like that. It's what it's meant to do. I'm going to leave it where it is, and I'm going to close my window and go back to my guided mode. So we're still here on this step where it asks us to open up guided mode and proceed. Uh, now that we are touching the edge, we're going to click the next button, and it'll give me a little pop-up saying, hey, did you find the edge? This is meant to catch you in case you're going a little bit fast, and maybe you don't realize that this is the particular step you're supposed to do the edge finding in. Um, if you click no, it'll just put you back here to remind you, hey, you got to do that edge finding. But we, of course, did it, so I'm going to click yes. And now I click yes, it's going to say, okay, time to record the location that we are in. So clicking yes. We'll write the current location to WCS, and it will move the edge finder away from the edge. So yeah, that's uh, that's all it is. We've now completed our edge finding. Uh, the machine now knows where that particular edge is. It's stored in the memory, and we're ready to move on to the next step.